In this tutorial, I'm going to share some of my favorite Photoshop tips with you. The first one is the Clarity tool in Photoshop CS6. We know there are many ways of retouching, but here we'll be using the Clarity tool in Photoshop to retouch. Clarity in Photoshop 6 is amazing. It gives a special boost to our images when they need it the most. However, this time I am going to use it in reverse. So instead of sliding my slider all the way to the right, I'm going to slide it all the way to the left. And then I'm going to import it into Photoshop by clicking on Open Image. But before I do that, I'm going to hit the Shift key on my keyboard. And notice that it's going to change to Open Object. This is going to convert this image into a Smart Object. So hold the Shift key and then click on Open Object. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to right click on this layer and then I'm going to make a new copy. Now I'm going to double click on this layer at the top and it's going to open it in Camera Raw. Here I'm going to set the clarity back to zero. And then I'll click OK. The next thing I want to do is I want to zoom in on the image and then move it around and now I'm going to go to the bottom of my layers panel and then I'll click on add layer mask I'll select a brush tool and then I'll set the foreground to black and background to white I've changed my opacity to 45 and now I can paint Clarity can be used to make your images pop, but in this case, I used Clarity to make the image soft. The next thing that I did was I opened the image as an object within Photoshop. What this allows me to do is it allows me to go back into Camera Raw by simply clicking on the layer. And at any time, for whatever reason, I can go back to Camera Raw by double clicking on my layer. Here I can apply any adjustments that I wish and then I can simply click OK and it's going to be applied to this image right here. Let's go to our next tip. There are two different places where we can remove noise in Camera Raw and in Photoshop. If you are concerned about the noise your pictures might have, hopefully you've shot raw files as the noise reduction in Camera Raw is the best solution for noise removal. We should use the noise reduction in the detail panel of Camera Raw. So I can click on Detail at the top and then I'll go down to Noise Reduction. You can use the Luminance slider and simply move it to the right. And as I do that, pay attention to the noise that you see within this image. You can bring this picture into Photoshop and then bring another one that doesn't have this effect applied to it and simply erase the elements that you do not need. Working with smart objects gives us great flexibility, especially when it comes to cropping. Let me show you one of my raw images. I'm going to click on this picture right here. And now I have it within Camera Raw. Now I'm going to crop this image by selecting the Crop tool. Let's pretend that I'm satisfied with this crop for now. Next, I'm going to hold the Shift key on my keyboard and notice that Open Image changes to Open Object when I hold the Shift key. Now I'm going to open this as an object. In Photoshop, I can do the necessary adjustments, but let's say I really don't like this crop anymore and I want to change it. Well, you would have to start all over, but since this is an object, we can simply double click on the layer and it'll take us back into Camera Raw. Then I'll simply select the Crop tool again and notice that I can crop my image again. And this means that I don't have to start all over. For whatever reason, not everybody shoots raw images, so I'll show you a quick way to fix the color balance in Photoshop. I'll go to Image, Adjustments, 
and then I'm going to select match color. Notice that you have different image options here and you can also select a source for your image when it comes to color balance. But I'm going to focus on this little checkbox right here. If I click on neutralize, it's going to give an overall color correction. I can fix that by changing the color intensity. I can also make it fade and I can change the luminance if necessary. Once I'm satisfied, I'll click OK. Have you ever lost all of your panels? Hit the tab key on your keyboard and the panels will return. This keyboard shortcut is wonderful when we want to hide all the distractions in order to view and focus on the image at hand. Shortcuts are a time saver and you can create your own. You can go to Edit and then click on Keyboard Shortcuts or you can use the shortcut right here to access this menu. Once you're here, you can navigate through and then let's select Layer for example and I'm going to assign a shortcut for grouping in layers. So I'm going to click on Group and let's make something up. Let's click Control, Alt, and Plus on our keyboard. Photoshop is telling me that this key has been used already, but I'll use it anyways, so I'll click Accept. Now we have created a new shortcut which we can use in our Layers panel. I'll click OK and I'll test it out. I'll just make a few copies of my layer and then I'll select the three layers and I'll hit Control, Alt, and the Plus key. And that's it. I'm going to use the HUD pop-up color picker. HUD, H-U-D, stands for Heads Up Display. I'll select the eyedropper by hitting the I key on my keyboard. Next, I'm going to hit Alt and Shift and then I'm going to right click. This will bring up a color picker. Hold the mouse down until you find the right color and then you can let go. Keep in mind it's Alt, Shift, right click. If you're using a Mac you can hit Command, Option, Control. For those who do not shoot raw images this option might be useful. I'll right click on my layer to convert it to a smart object. Next, I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, and then I'll select Shadows and Highlights. Click on Show More Options. From this menu, we can adjust the shadows and the highlights. You can also adjust the radius, brightness, and the midtone contrast. So I'm going to play around with this image until I can recover some of the last detail in my shadows back there. And I think this will be just fine, so I'm going to click OK. Since this is a smart object, a smart filter will be applied right here. I'm going to click on it just once, and then on my keyboard I'm going to click Control i This is going to invert this little layer right here. Next, I'm going to use the brush and I'm going to increase the size of the brush by clicking right here at the top and then making this, let's see, 106. Oh, maybe that's too small. Let's make it 453. With black, I'm going to subtract and with white, I'm going to add. And I really want to bring the detail back, so I'm going to zoom in and then I'll start painting in. And notice that I'm able to recover all the detail that was lost in these shadows. To undo it, simply switch back to black and then paint it back in. We can open JPEGs and TIFF files in Camera Raw, however, this will not be technically beneficial as JPEGs and TIFFs do not possess as much as information as RAW images do. But it can be used for quick adjustments which allows us to work faster than if we were to do the same within Photoshop. So here I have a few JPEG files. I'm going to select them, 
right click and then I'll open in camera raw. From here I can make individual adjustments. I can select all and then apply whatever adjustment I make to all the pictures. I can also use my clarity tool that I mentioned earlier in this tutorial. And then once I'm done I can select all my pictures and click save images. We know that technology changes rapidly. As camera sensors improve, we are able to get better quality images from our cameras. There is a big difference between 8 megapixel and 21 megapixel files. 21 megapixel files are large and can slow us down when working in Photoshop, especially if our computer is a little bit outdated. Provided that you have enough RAM, the higher the better, you can control how much of it is used by Photoshop. Simply click on Control K in Photoshop or Command K if you're using a Mac. Next, we are going to click on Performance. You can drag the slider to the right to let Photoshop use a higher percentage of your RAM. If you have multiple drives on your computer, they're going to be listed right here, which allows you to assign additional scratch disks. Be careful with these options right here. If you allow Photoshop to use 100% of your RAM, you might not be able to multitask efficiently. That's it for this week. Like us on our Facebook wall for Photoshop articles and more tutorials. Or visit our website at dmimaging.net.